Now for fractures and cast care for our pediatric clients. It's a little bit different from our adult clients in that broken bones heal faster in children. So let's cover all the key points from our adult health course. The pathophysiology is simple. A fracture is just fancy words for a broken bone, and there are a few different types. For a closed fracture, this does not break the skin. So with this fracture, the skin is still intact. Now for an open fracture, also called a compound fracture, the skin surface is broken and bones protrude through, placing the client at high risk for infection, like osteomyelitis, the bone infection, which we cover a little later in this video. Now the other types of fractures, we have a complete fracture, where the bone is broken all the way through, an incomplete fracture, also called a green stick, only goes partially through the bone, and a spiral fracture, write this one down. This one results from a twisting motion, so it's common in child abuse. These are typically reported to the authorities for further investigation. Next is an oblique fracture, a fracture at an angle, and then a compression fracture, known as an impact fracture, where bones are compressed like after a high fall or even a jump. And lastly, we have a crushing or compression fracture, where bones get crushed under a heavy object, like dropping a safe on your leg. This one places the client at high risk for a deadly fat embolism, which we also cover later. Now, you don't need to memorize every single one here. I would focus on the three that are highlighted. A spiral fracture indicates child abuse in pediatrics. A crushing or compression fracture here, think deadly fat embolism. And an open fracture or compound leads to more infection because the skin is broken. So ATI had two questions here. Question one, which of the following injuries in a two-year-old is most concerning for child abuse? Humerus fracture. Yes, that broken long bone in the arm. Again, spiral fracture is the most common type of fracture seen in child abuse due to the twisting of the arm. Now, question two, an eight-year-old child who has a green stick fracture after falling from his bicycle, which of the following items represents this type of fracture? Yes, the green stick fracture, also called incomplete fracture, only goes partially through the bone. Now for causes and risks of fractures, write this one down. Bed rest, as well as osteoporosis, where the bones become very weak and porous with porosis. A big one here is steroids ending in zone, huge NCLEX tip, like prednisone. Just think that the zones make the bones so weak. And lastly is a trauma like falling off a bike. So Hesse mentions, a nurse is caring for a patient on bed rest. Which long-term effect of bed rest on the musculoskeletal system would concern the nurse the most? So bone fractures as well as loss of muscle tone and atrophy from the lack of motion. Now the signs and symptoms are pretty simple here with any type of fracture. We'll see a lot of pain, swelling as well as bruising, and crepitus, which is a grinding sound as the bones or cartilage rub together, and muscle spasms. Now a priority finding and a big NCLEX tip here is internal bleeding. So hypotension, tachycardia, and even hematuria, that blood inside the urine. So Hesse mentions a pelvic fracture, which is the most serious physical assessment finding for the nurse to report. Hypotension, tachycardia, and hematuria. Now switching gears here for some NCLEX priority findings on who to see first. So write down these key terms here. For a basilary skull fracture, we see CSF, that cerebral spinal fluid, draining from the nose. This is called rhinorrhea. So key terms, clear liquid drainage from the nose area. This is a priority patient. Now for a spinal fracture that is T6 or higher, we want to make sure to monitor for neurogenic shock. Look for hypotension with any type of shock, as well as bradycardia. Write that one down. Because typical for shock, we'll see tachycardia, but not for neurogenic shock. Bradycardia is the biggest indication for a spinal fracture, as well as skin that is pink and dry. Now for a mandibular fracture, or basically a fracture to the mandible area, we'll see bleeding and drooling in the mouth, so we suction the mouth and the oropharynx. This is done to protect the airway here. Now for hip fractures, big NCLEX tips here. 
Key signs are shortening of the leg on the affected side caused by the muscle spasms around the affected area. And we'll see ecchymosis on the thigh and hip as well as groin and hip pain with weight bearing. So ATI says, which of the following statements by a parent indicates an understanding of teaching? A fracture to an arm can cause it to be shorter than the non-injured arm. Now, speaking of uneven limbs, let's cover all the key points for the top-tested Bucks traction. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also, feel free to share the love, share with a classmate, and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.